In this video, we're going to focus on the dielectrics of capacitors. So let's start with this problem. An air-filled 50 microfarad capacitor has a voltage of 10 volts. An insulator with a dielectric constant of 4.0 is inserted between the metal plates. Calculate the capacitance. So this is going to be the original capacitor. Let's say this side is positively charged and the other plate is negatively charged. Now the original capacitor has no insulated material between the two plates. So the only thing that is in between them is air. And the dielectric constant for air is approximately 1. So for this air-filled capacitor, the capacitance is 50 microfarads, and the voltage across the plates is 10 volts. Now what's going to happen if we put an insulated material in between the two plates? So let's say there's an insulated between them. What's going to happen to the capacitance and the voltage? Will they increase, decrease? What's going to happen? So the dielectric constant of this material is 4. Now whenever you increase the K value, you need to know that the capacitance increases proportionally and the voltage decreases if, if the capacitor is not connected to a battery or some power source. If it's not connected to anything, the capacitance will go up, the voltage will go down, and the charge simply stays the same. Now to calculate the new capacitance, let's call it CF or the final capacitance is equal to the original capacitance multiplied by the dielectric constant. So the original capacitance was 50 microfarads. And if we multiply it by 4, so the new capacitance is going to be 200 microfarads. So it increased by a factor of 4. Now what about the voltage? What is the new voltage across the capacitor? Well, to calculate the new voltage, it's going to be the original voltage divided by K because it's going to decrease. The original voltage was 10 volts and K is 4. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. So that's the new voltage across the capacitor. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the original charge on the capacitor. To calculate the electric charge is equal to CV. And so the original capacitance was 50 microfarads. And if we multiply that by 10 volts, 50 times 10 is 500. So if I keep the unit microfarads, I'm going to get microcoulombs. So the charge on this capacitor is 500 microcoulombs. That's the original charge. Now let's calculate the new charge using these new values. So let's see if I can fit it in somewhere. So Q will equal CV. The new capacitance is 200 microfarads. And the new voltage is 2.5 volts. So if you take 200 and multiply by 2.5, you're going to get the same answer of 500 microcoulombs. So the charge doesn't uh, change. Anytime you increase the dielectric constant, the capacitance will increase in value. The voltage will decrease in value and the charge will stay the same. And it makes sense why the charge will stay the same. If we increase C and decrease V proportionally, these two will cancel such that Q stays the same. Number two, a capacitor composed of two metal plates separated by an air gap of one millimeter has a voltage of 15 volts. Calculate the electric field inside the capacitor. So let's say it's separated by a distance of one millimeter. This is going to be the positive plate. And this is going to be the negatively charged plate. And so the capacitor has a voltage of 15 volts. So calculate the electric field in between the two plates. 
to calculate the electric field is simply the voltage divided by the distance. So it's 15 volts divided by 1 millimeter or 0 0.001 meters. And so that works out to be 15,000 volts per meter. So that's the electric field inside the capacitor. Now let's move on to the next part. If a material with a dielectric constant of 3.0 is inserted in between the two metal plates, what will be the new electric field inside of the capacitor? So if we increase the dielectric constant of the capacitor, will the electric field increase or decrease? Well, we know that the voltage will decrease if it's not connected across the battery. And the electric field is proportional to the voltage, so therefore the electric field should decrease as well. So to calculate the new electric field, it's going to be the original electric field divided by K. So that's going to be 15,000 divided by 3. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So it's now 5,000 volts per meter. Now what about the potential energy of the capacitor? If we increase the dielectric constant, what happens to the potential energy? The potential energy is 1 half QV. Now we know that if it's not connected across the battery, Q stays the same. It doesn't change. However, by adding a dielectric constant, the voltage decreases. And so therefore, the potential energy of the capacitor decreases. Now, once you insert an insulated material inside a capacitor, if that material has, let's say, polar molecules, initially, these molecules won't be aligned. So they might look like this. Now, once you put them inside an electric field, these molecules will align themselves. The positive part of the molecules will be facing the negatively charged plate, and the negative part of the molecules will be facing the positively charged plate. And so it takes energy for these molecules to realign themselves. And so that's one reason why the potential energy of the capacitor decreases. Now, in the last two problems, we saw that if we add an insulator and if we increase the dielectric constant of a capacitor that is not connected to a battery, the capacitance increased proportionally, the voltage decreased, the electric charge remained the same, the electric field decreased, and the potential energy stored in a capacitor decreased. Now let's see what's going to happen if we add an insulated material to a capacitor that is connected to a battery. And let's say that the battery remains connected to the capacitor. It's not going to be disconnected at any point. So let's go ahead and try this. So part A, calculate the charge, electric field, and potential energy stored in this capacitor. So right now, the capacitance is 40 microfarads. The voltage is 12 volts. So to calculate the charge, it's C times V. So it's 40 microfarads multiplied by 12 volts. So 4 times 12 is 48. So 40 times 12 must be 480. So the electric charge is going to be 480 microcoulombs. The electric field is going to be the voltage divided by the separation distance. So we have a voltage of 12, and the separation distance is 2 millimeters, or 0 0.002 meters. And so the electric field is 6,000 volts per meter. The potential energy is going to be 1 half QV. You could also calculate it using this 1 half CV squared. So you can use that formula too. The charge is 480 microcoulombs multiplied by a voltage of 12 volts. So because this is going to be in a micro, 
this answer is in millijoules, I mean microjoules. So this is 2880 microjoules, which if you multiply that by 1,000, that's 2.88 millijoules. So that's the potential energy stored in this capacitor. Now let's move on to part B. So if we add an insulator with a dielectric constant of 5, what's going to be the new capacitance, voltage, electric charge, electric field, and potential energy in this capacitor? Well, we know that the capacitance will increase. The new capacitance is going to be the original 1 times K. So it's going to be 40 microfarads multiplied by 5. So it's going to increase by a factor of 5. So it's going to be 200 microfarads. Now what about the voltage? Because it's still in contact with the battery, the voltage is going to stay the same. Initially, the voltage drops by a factor of 4. So 12, I mean by a factor of 5. 12 divided by 5 is 2.4 but then the battery is going to recharge the capacitor back up to 12 volts. So in the end, the voltage will still be 12 because it's still connected to the same battery. Now this time, the charge is not going to be constant. It's going to change. And the charge is Q equals CV. So C this time is 200 microfarads and the voltage is 12. So if you take 200 and multiply by 12, that will give you a charge of 2400 microclooms. Now, because the voltage is still the same, the electric field will be the same. It's going to be 12 volts divided by 0 0.002 meters, and so it's still going to be 6,000 volts per meter. Now, what about the potential energy? That's 1 half QV. So V is constant, but Q went up, which means the potential energy should go up as well. So it's going to be 1 half times 2400 microcoulombs multiplied by a voltage of 12. And so that's going to be 14,400 microjoules. So if this is in microcoulombs, this will be in microjoules. And if we divide that by 1,000, this is going to be 14.4 millijoules. And so that's it. So notice that the capacitance increased by a factor of 5, and the potential energy increased by a factor of 5. It's 2.88 times 5. So the increase in potential energy came from the battery. Once you add the insulator, the voltage of the capacitor goes down. And so there's going to be a difference between the voltage of the battery and the voltage of the capacitor. And so the battery charges up the capacitor back to 12 volts. And that's why the potential energy goes up, because more energy is consumed from the battery once you add the insulator. So let's summarize everything for this problem. So if the capacitor remains in contact with the battery, if we increase the dielectric constant, the capacitance will increase. The voltage will stay the same. The charge will increase the electric field will stay the same, and the potential energy will increase. So nothing decreases if you keep the capacitor connected to the battery.